My name is Carlin Borisenko, and you are listening to the Actively Unwoke podcast. Well, I just got done movie night with members of my supporter community, and we have a supporter discord where we connect, where we chat, where we watch movies together every once in a while. This week, we watched 1984, which is going to be extremely relevant to our discussion today about why you never, ever, 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 ever apologize to the woke, whether they're woke on the left or woke on the right. And both do exist. The word woke in the way that I use it is just about being an authoritarian. You can be an authoritarian on the left. You can be an authoritarian on the right. The battle that we are in is not a battle of left versus right. It is a battle of authoritarianism versus libertarianism. But I'm going to talk today about why when you're in the midst of a cancel mob, you never apologize. You never apologize. Even if the argument could be made that you did something that is worthy of an apology. You never do it. And we're going to talk about why, and we're going to talk about 1984, the movie today. I know the book is much better than the movie. The book is always better than the movie, but the movie is pretty good, and I just watched it with members of my supporter community. And by the way, if you want to get invited to my supporter Discord, then head over to activelyunwoke.com slash support, become a monthly supporter on Patreon or on Locals, or become a supporter on one of my sub stacks and you will get the links to join the illustrious supporter discord and you're going to be able to join us for our next movie night or our craft and bitches or any of the other group activities that we do we actually do quite a few of them and i definitely recommend you at least get involved in my locals kb.locals.com and join it and kind of see the stuff we've got going on because we really do connect as a community quite a bit and i think that that connection as a community has kept a lot of us sane over the past couple of years. And so we welcome all like-minded people to join us. But I want to talk today about why you never, ever, ever apologize. You know, in watching 1984, and I have read the book or listened to the audiobook countless times, and you learn something new every time, and you pick up new things every time, really depending on what's going on in the world. And today, the thing that stuck out to me the most in the movie was for those of you who haven't seen it, there is a, a, a series of scenes at the end where Winston, the main character of the movie, has basically been discovered as a thought criminal by the state because he is engaging in acts of rebellion against what the state wants him to do. And they take him to the Ministry of Love, where they torture him relentlessly until he learns and really learns how to warp his entire mind to gaslight himself to make himself in complete loyalty to the state. And in the midst of this, and I had never noticed this before when I'd watched the movie, they were talking about why they do this. Why does the state in 1984 go through the arduous process of days or weeks or months of torture? inflicting unnecessary pain on someone who they've already got in their in their in their grasps they could just kill him the minute that they arrested winston in 1984 they could have just killed him and be done with it he was caught as a traitor to the state they could have just taken him out back behind the, sh- the shed and shot him but they didn't do that they went through the process of torturing him to quote unquote rehabilitate him to reeducate him if you will in the gulag And this was done by a very high-ranking person in the party. So it wasn't even like a low-level kind of grunt work to do the torturing. It was done by a high-level person who committed hours, days, weeks, who knows how long, we don't even know how long, to the process of torturing this person to get them to gaslight themselves into believing that everything the state does is correct, everything the party does is correct. Why did they do this? because it was an exercise of power. And they were talking in the, the scene in the movie about how power is not the means to the end. Power is the end itself. Power is the goal. And the process of torturing someone in order to get them to bend the knee to relinquish any part of themselves, any part of their humanity to this collective. 
That is how they gain power. That is a demonstration of their power. What is the line? It's it's you know when you like looking back on history is a in in the world of 1984 is the human face underneath a boot. That's not the exact line. I don't remember the exact line off the top of my head, but that's about it. A boot crushing a human face. Their goal is to crush all of the humanity out of you. To lose any part of who you are as a human being. Because as long as you retain any part of who you are, any part of your humanity, then you are not under the control of the state. So they have to smash that out of you with everything they have. Power is not the means to the end. Power is the end goal in and of itself. So what does that have to do with not apologizing when you are undergoing a cancel mob? You know, I'm involved with the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. I'm a member of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. I know the people running the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire Twitter account. and. You know, the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire Twitter account made some waves in the last couple of weeks. For those of you who are not on Twitter and did not get wind of this, essentially what happened is that the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire Twitter account tweeted an image of Meghan McCain crying over John McCain's coffin on the anniversary of John McCain's death. And they posted it with the caption, Happy Holidays. And it was a comment on John McCain being a warmonger, essentially, is what they were. That was the comment that they were making. And they were not sorry that John McCain was dead and they celebrate his death as a holiday. Now, you might agree with that. You might not agree with that. But it created a little Twitter kerfuffle when Meghan McCain retweeted it six times (laughs) and pissed everyone off. But I tell you that story because it really did create a lot of backlash on the folks running the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire Twitter account. I heard some of that backlash directly. And a lot of that backlash came from the right. And I thought it was so funny. This is a side note, but I thought it was so funny to see conservatives who I know hate Meghan McCain, like just do not like her at all, and defending her in the wake of this obvious attack, because that's what happens when a pylon starts online. That's what happens when a cancel mob starts. And cancellation, by the way, is, you know, sometimes people say that you're only canceled if you lose your job or you lose your credit cards or you lose your bank account or something like that. That's not true at all. Cancellation, in one of its most effective forms, takes the form of social ostracization. Because as we learned in 1984, power is the end. That is the end goal. Social ostracization is a very easy way to get power over someone where you are getting so many replies and retweets and DMs calling you a horrible horrible person, demanding you apologize. That is all a form of social ostracization to try to get you to bend the knee. And there were people that were pressuring very high ranking people saying, maybe we should apologize for this. Maybe we should issue a statement. And I was very proud of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire when they stuck to their guns. And not only did they stick to their guns, they doubled down and said, nope, we are not giving into this. We are not celebrating this person. We are not celebrating his daughter who literally used his grave to promote her book. If you've seen the picture, there is actually a picture of Meghan McCain with her daughter at John McCain's grave in which Meghan McCain leaned a copy of her book up against the the gravestone for the picture. And I was very proud of the Libertarian Party in New Hampshire for not bending the knee and not taking it back and not apologizing. I'm going to give you one other example of the time when I've seen something like this happen. And there are millions of examples we could give, but this was a very high profile one. Several months ago, this happened to Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan, someone, I mean, Joe Rogan is always in a perpetual state of cancellation, I think, or attempted cancellation. He, he can't really be canceled. He's too rich to be canceled. But there was a moment several months ago where someone edited together every time Joe Rogan has said the N-word and then also included when Joe Rogan told a really off-color joke that I personally don't think he should have told. If I'm honest, it, it had to do with non-white people being compared to um, animals. And I bring up this example because it was another example of when a, a concerted effort had been made to, 
to focus a cancellation, focus a mob on someone. But the reason I bring this one up is you can really make the argument that Joe Rogan probably should have apologized. And I think that he did in some way. What he said, he said some legitimately racist things. You could talk about all the instances in which he's used the N-word, and I never recommend that people use that word. I don't think there's any reason to use that word. I find it to be in really poor taste. It doesn't gain you anything. I, you can make the argument that Joe Rogan was using that word in order to make a point about the use of the word sometimes, and I can kind of wrap my head around that. I also just don't think you ever win that battle at all. And it's just a really hurtful thing to say for a lot of people, and I don't think it gained you anything. However, you could actually make a legitimate argument that Joe Rogan should have apologized for the joke that he told, in which, again, he compared non-white people to animals. That was a, a legitimately racist thing. It was legitimately bad. But I still, in that case, don't think he should have apologized. I don't think the LPNH should have apologized. I don't think that Joe Rogan should apologize because the goal in these circumstances is only to gain power over the person being canceled. I guarantee you that not a single person who was complaining about the LPNH Happy Holidays tweet actually cared about Meghan McCain or John McCain. Not a single one. Okay, maybe maybe a single one. Maybe a single one of the thousands who did. Maybe even as many as five of the thousands who did. But the vast majority were just engaging in a cancel mob to engage in a cancel mob because it's something that you can do for clout. And I would say the same thing is true of Joe Rogan. I, even though I do personally disagree with what he said and I don't think he should have said it, I do not believe that he should have apologized for it. Because the minute that you apologize is the minute that you give these people power over you. There is a difference between thinking in your head, oh, yeah, probably shouldn't have said that, probably wouldn't do that again today, and then actually bending the knee to the mob. What people really have to understand is that when you are undergoing a cancellation and when you are fighting back against the woke left or even the woke right, to be honest, because I've actually been canceled more by the right than I have on the left, you will get canceled at some point. It might be a small cancellation. It might be a really large cancellation. You will get canceled at some point. And the very best advice that I can give you is do not bend the knee. Do not apologize. Do not admit to any wrongdoing. Do not allow these people to have power over you because they are not doing it in order to do the right thing. It has A cancellation has no relevance to doing the right thing at all. It is only about gaining power over another human being because power is not the means to the end. Power is the end itself. That is what an authoritarian mob does. They cancel you and socially ostracize you and make you believe that you are all alone and that all you can do is bend the knee to their whim. But the problem is that once you do it once, they know they've got you. Once you apologize for one thing, they know they've got you. Always and forever, they know they've got you. Part of this is that most people as individuals are reasonable human beings. They're reasonable. But the woke mob is not reasonable. And so when the woke mob comes for you and you try to behave like a reasonable human being in the face of a woke mob, it is inherently imbalanced. Because you are being a reasonable person, the woke mob is not and never will be reasonable. And for that reason, because they are unreasonable, the woke mob can change course at any time. At any time. They will change the rules whenever they want to. They are not going to behave in a principled way. They are not going to behave as a reasonable person would. They are not going to extend forgiveness. They are not going to offer redemption. If you if they say apologize, 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 take down the tweet, take down the tweet, take down the tweet, and then you do the thing they want you to do, they're not going to go, okay, 
all is forgiven. Welcome back. You know, you, we forgive you. That's not what's going to happen. They're going to make it seem like that's what's going to happen, but that is not what is going to happen. What's going to happen is they're going to demand more. They're going to demand another blood sacrifice and then another one after that and then another one after that and then another one after that. And they will never stop. The mistake that people make when they apologize is that they are behaving like a reasonable person would to another reasonable person. They are forgetting that the woke mob is not reasonable. They never will be reasonable. And there will never be an offer of redemption. There will never be an offer of forgiveness. So stop pretending that there will be. When you are facing off against a woke mob, you have to behave unreasonably. Dig in your heels. Do not bend the knee. Do not apologize. Do not admit any wrongdoing. In fact, double down if you have to. Double down. Change the rules just like they would. Do not accept the rules that they are trying to make you play by because the rules they're trying to make you play by are only inflicted on you to gain power over you. That is it. When you apologize to a woke mob, you are allowing them to make you their slave. You are telling them, anytime you come at me with the threat of social ostracization, I will give you whatever you want. Please just don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Make the pain stop. Make the pain stop. Make the pain stop. This is exactly, by the way, what Winston was doing in 1984. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you hurting me? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I'll do whatever I can. I'll do whatever I have to to make you stop. He was doing the same thing in the movie, in the book. And the state didn't relent. The state kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going until his mind was jelly, until it was moldable, until they were able to pull any humanity out of him at all. That is the goal. The goal is to make you lose yourself. The goal is to make you lose your humanity. Listen. Human beings are inherently flawed. You will make mistakes in life. You will make mistakes, and I hope you learn from them when you do, because that is one of the great values of mistakes, is they're teachers. They give us experience. They teach us what not to do again. But you will make mistakes as a human being. The woke mob is going to exploit every single mistake that you make to their greatest benefit, which is only and forever to gain power over you. That is it. When you apologize, you are helping them to gain power over you. And that's why you cannot be the reasonable person in the face of a woke mob. You cannot mistake them for making reasonable demands. Even if you look back and say, oh yeah, they really shouldn't have said that, you do not apologize ever. Learn from the mistake, fine. But there is no reason for an outward declaration of repentance. Because it will not stop the mob. You have got to understand that their only goal is power. And power is the end. And once you give in to them, you're done. Once you give them that inch, they will take that mile. And they will never stop until you lose your humanity. So don't be the reasonable person. In these circumstances, we have to be inherently unreasonable because that is the way we survive. That is the way we retain our humanity. And I promise you, I have been through, I don't even know how many cancellations at this point, but enough. I've been through a lot. The only way that you get through a cancellation with your humanity while retaining yourself, while being able to look yourself in the mirror, is to go through it. And yes, it sucks. Believe me, it sucks. It sucks really badly. You feel like the entire world is coming down around you. You feel like you're going to lose everything that you've worked years of your life for. It really does suck. But the only way to make the pain stop for real is to go through it. Not to go around it, 
not to retreat out of it, not to bend the knee. The only way to make the pain stop is to go through the storm, to weather the storm, to know who you are, to know that you are a good person, to know that no one deserves a woke cancel mob, no matter what they've done in their life. No one deserves a woke cancel mob. It is not other people's job to judge you. Your life is none of their business. Stand your ground. Do not apologize. Find the people that love you, because I promise you that what the woke mob does is they try to make it seem like everyone is against you. They try to make it seem like you have no friends. They try to make it seem like you have no allies. They try to make it seem like the only option you have to not lose everything in your life is to bend the knee to them. But it's not true. You have friends. You have family. You have people who love you. You have people who know that what they're saying is not true. And if you need another community, come join mine. Because I have a lot of people in my community who have been canceled, including me. We know what it's like. There are people who love you and will not allow the bad opinions of unjust actors to diminish that. You know, in the latest time that I was canceled... In the latest time that I was canceled, um, it was really bad. And uh, it wasn't actually as bad publicly as, 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 as other cancellations I've undergone, but it was, it was a really massive betrayal. I won't go into the details of it, other than to say that they really did their level best to try to turn everyone in my life against me. They really, really did. But I'm very lucky in that I have good friends that said, Carlin, these are not honorable people. These, the people making these accusations against you are not honorable people. And we will not treat them as though they are. We know who you are. We know that you, we know that these accusations don't hold water. And we are not going to bend the knee to dishonorable people. And I guarantee you that you have people in your life like that. And those are the people that you want to connect with. The world is going mad. And sometimes it can seem like joining a cancel mob is the best thing you can do. Because then you're safe and then you're protected. But I guarantee you the mob will always turn on you too. People who think that they're safe because they joined in on the mob. I wish those people the best of luck because they will always turn on you. And then they'll get theirs. Karma is a real thing. But for our purposes, we're going to create a different kind of community. We're going to create a community that doesn't engage in that bullshit at all. That's what I'm working on. If you'd like to be a part of my community, you can join it at... Well, there are lots of ways to join my community. Probably the easiest way is by joining my locals. You can join locals for free. There are paid membership options if you want to support the work I'm doing, but you can join for free. And you can do that at kb.locals.com. You can head over to activelyunwoke.com and hit the support button and it'll take you to my local support page if you'd like to sign up as a paid supporter. But it'll also, that's also a link where you can join for free um, as well. So the choice is up to you. And I'm, I'm trying to build a different type of community. I want to build a community of, you know, we don't always agree. My community does not always agree, but we don't engage in this. We don't engage in cancel mobs. We don't engage in woke drama and nonsense. We help each other. We support each other. And it really does make the world much more bearable. So that's probably the best place to start if you want to join my community. That's uh, one of the entry points to the supporter discord where it's kind of like the inner sanctum of the community. Come join us. If you're looking for people to connect with, come join us or go somewhere else too. You know, but just find the good people because there are a lot of people in the world who are getting sucked into varying levels of insanity. And we need to find good people. People that will help us weather the storm because the only way 
is to go through it. All right, guys, that's all I have for right now. And uh, I will see you with another episode of the podcast soon.